Hi there, my name is Anton um, and in this video I will present you this um, game, this uh, remix that I've been making. It's um, built with Lego Mario and a Spike Prime set and the objective of the game is to uh, run Mario over this self-made obstacle course where you can um, have him jump around and um, collect points and you can uh, create all kinds of obstacles in the way. Um, for instance here I created a Bowser that is up straight and then when you hit his castle he just uh, falls over. Um, let's have a look at uh, the gameplay, how does this really works. quickly run you through the program so you can understand how it's built it looks a little complex but it isn't uh, yeah it looks more complex than it is I will publish uh, the full program on my website antonsmindstorms.com um, and I'll write a little article around it so you can understand how it's work how it works um, in general it's got three uh, yellow hat blocks here um, so there is an obvious program start block and there are two blocks that monitor the, um, the pressure sensor so um, there are two blocks that monitor the, the pressure sensor here so when it's pressed it is one thing and when it's released it does another thing um, and then there is one variable here in the program, it's called running. And I only watch the pressure sensor when running is set to one, because during the setup here, when the program starts and Mario is reset um, to the right starting position, so I'll wait until the color sensor sees green. Um, so what we want to see is, um, where this uh, green tube passes by the sensor. So that's what this block does. But if the user starts pressing on the pressure sensor while that is calibrating, it goes, uh, it goes wrong. So I'm setting running to zero for the setup phase. That's all of these blocks. And then I'm setting running to one, which means the program starts listening to the pressure here. Then here what happens is um, depending on which side uh, Mario is, you do a different program. So if Mario, uh, if the position of the motor is negative, this means Mario is on the left. Um, uh, this means uh, press pressing the sensor has to run the motor forward. Um, and vice versa. So this, base is, this is basically running the Mario motor, motor A, the, the, the large motor, at uh, forward or reverse, depending on which side Mario is. And same happens when it, Mario is released. This sets Mario down smoothly um, by checking on which side he is and then uh, doing a go to position. Uh, the position being down here, you can see, so that's down on the left side and this position is down on the right side 
uh, so in Lens Mario. Um, and then, so this is all of all of that is set up. Then I said running to one, and I wait 60 seconds. So this this is the time when I start listening to these blocks, and then when the time's up, I stop uh, the running variable again, and I set Mario to the center position. So he basically resets. So that's the program. Um, again, I um, will share it on my website and um, do some more commenting. Um, if you build... <coughs> so that's the program. I'll share it on my website. Maybe add some more comments and feel free to ask any questions you have. Okay, I'll um, walk you through the model. I won't be providing building instructions for this one. So I'll just quickly show you how it's built. It isn't very difficult. Um, what it basically is, is of course two big wheels here and um, with all kind of Mario elements on top. I'll remove a wheel so you can see what is happening. Um, so the wheels are these uh, rotten banana gears and um, I put these five long um, beams on there and then this connector plug and then they are connected to Kjeld bricks and on top of the Kjeld bricks you can build almost any Mario element. This wheel has um, almost no green so this color sensor here can detect when the green starting tube passes and stop the um, or at least at least put Mario into starting position um, so you can put uh, all these uh, figures on there and I designed this little slide but you can of course design your own interactive elements um, on the other side there is also a wheel Hey Mario, you still there? Okay, so that studded Lego for you keeps falling off. <laughs> so here on this side um, I have the finish flag. I, I inserted the flag a little deeper so it wasn't as long so it could um, rotate all the way through around. Um, there is interactive Bowser here and you can put him up straight and then when Mario jumps on the tower uh, Bowser falls over and um, you can jump on his shield. There is a little cloud here, cloud 9, with uh, lava all around it, some pieces of grass and of course the question mark block. Um, then, so both wheels are mounted here on the side they're on a big turntable and the turntable is um, actuated here with a smaller gear so everything slows down a little bit, it's all geared down. Um, and then I mounted these medium motors on these big blue frames here. It's all quite simple here and the big blue frames, the big blue frames, they are on the yellow base plates. Then in the back there is a tower consisting of um, two 5 by 7 frames and two 7 by 11 frames. The motor, the medium motor, or the large motor at least, is in between there. And um, it's a little tilted, so otherwise I have to build it up much higher here. That would be inconvenient, so I tilted everything back. And then here in the back there is um, a little mechanism with gears that um, takes the backside output of the motor and transfers the rotation with some gears five um, holes up. So both arms here are actuated and this means Mario stays vertical all the time while uh, moving from side to side. Mario here is um, attached with these T-shaped pieces um, and they exactly fit on over his ears. 
So you, I removed the ear tiles and inserted Mario in here. Yeah, Mario, my fingers are hot. Okay, so, um, well, let's, uh, let's reassemble the whole thing and play some more Mario. So this one goes here. I'll show you. With just two pins, you can connect the thing. This one goes there, of course. Oh, maybe I, I'll, I'll show you what's underneath the castle first. So, um, the turntables are uh, mounted with um, these T-bone or doggy bone pieces. And then these T-shaped pieces, they keep the, um, the turntables in place. And then I added this, um, another Kjeld brick here on top to, whoops, I, destroyed my castle there. Okay, I rebuilt my castle now. Um, so this is some decoration. There is even a little cloud that tends to keep falling off when you play hard. And there is the original Spike Prime minifigure sitting on the lawn. And, okay, let's connect them. There we go. So now we're all set up to play Mario. When I start the program, so this sensor will scan for the uh, green starting tube. It waits for green actually, and then moves Mario down. The program works um, this way, that once Mario is starting, the, the button is activated, so you can start pressing it to move Mario up. When you press the button, it, uh, like it, it, runs, um, it increases the voltage to the motor instantly with uh, the pressure of the button until you reach the apex of the jump here, and then it starts moving down with a controlled movement. So this way you have a, a very quick reaction and a soft landing. Um, and then after 60 seconds the program stops, which is about the time Mario has to complete his run. And um, you can start it again. So let's see um, how the program works here. I'm going to start it. So now you will see that Mario moves into place, it starts scanning and I can start jumping around. So pressing hard moves Mario up hard, pressing softly moves Mario slowly. Unless he's over his apex, then he starts going down. Okay, I hit the finish there, so Mario is stopping now. I'm gonna restart the program, so you can see it all again. Okay, let's move Mario to zero position, wait for green and put him into the tube. There we go, now we can jump on top of the head here, do the, the yellow slide, jump uh, on, oh, I forgot to put Bowser in the starting position, we can, we can still do that for the next run. Okay, I hit Bowser there, that's nice. Sometimes it doesn't really scan the tiles. It's I don't know. Sometimes Mario is a little slow or something, but it works most of the time. Okay, we've got 15 seconds left. Let's see if we can hit the finish there. Yes, it worked. We hit the finish in time. So now we have a um, score. I still have to stop it manually because there is no Bluetooth connection between Mario and the spike hub. Um, that is possible in, in theory, but I think it would require some hacks to connect the two together and um, maybe read out 
whether Mario is in a game or what his score is and display it here. Um, well, those are all future hacks. Um, for now, I hope you uh, get inspired by this model and you are inspired to build one yourself. Um, I myself had a lot of fun with it by trying to modify everything and build a fun uh, track. Um, and I kept playing it and I kept trying to improve my scores. Okay, let's play it one more time. Yes, I hit Bowser there. Now let's try and hit his shield. I hit his shield. Oops, too late for the question one block. 